What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, algorithm, go. This week we are discussing a study that was a meta-analysis that was attempting to look at diet breaks and whether or not they can help with staving off metabolic adaptation. So for those who may be new, metabolic adaptation is essentially the slowing of metabolism during periods of weight loss. So when you lose weight, your metabolic rate does slow. One, because you lose some weight, you're carrying around less overall mass, and so it requires less energy to locomote a lower amount of mass. But metabolic adaptation is the drop in metabolic rate beyond what you experience just from the adjustment of mass. And so metabolic adaptation is a drop in metabolic rate in addition to having less mass. So this is a metabolic change rather than just a change in locomoting mass. There have been some studies that have come out with various different modalities to try to stave off metabolic adaptation. And one study that got a lot of attention, I think back in 2018, was the Matador study, where they showed better fat loss efficiency, better metabolic rate preservation, and better lean mass preservation, and I believe less body weight regain in a group doing two weeks of dieting followed by two week diet breaks and alternating those over 30 weeks versus a group that just dieted straight for 16 weeks. Now the reason one group did 30 and one group did 16 was the 16 week group was dieting straight through the group doing two weeks on two weeks off they needed a total of 30 weeks to hit 16 weeks of the actual calorie deficit of dieting and they showed that it did significantly attenuate metabolic adaptation but other studies came out and showed not as powerful an effect and some studies showed no effect. So this meta-analysis attempted to provide somewhat of a consensus. When they refer to their inclusion criteria for what they called intermittent dieting, they looked at diet breaks and refeeds. And diet breaks were defined as a four-day period eating at least at maintenance calories or above, and refeeds were days eating at maintenance calories or above. They combined this data from these studies, and what they found was that intermittent dieting provided about a 50 calorie difference from continuous energy restriction, what they called it. So basically just dieting straight through. The groups that did the intermittent dieting or diet breaks or refeeds had 50 calories less of a drop in their metabolic rate than the group doing continuous energy restriction. And the average weight loss in these studies was a about 5% of their body weight, about, about five kilograms. My takeaways are that I am not ready to say that diet breaks absolutely attenuate the slowing of metabolism. I was big on diet breaks and I still am from a practical perspective of they allow you to have a mental break and refresh. And also it is nice to pick out specific periods of time where say you're not traveling and you're in a regular schedule and you can do kind of diet sprints. And then when you've got like more work on or you've got family events or you've got travel coming up, you can insert a diet break, eat at maintenance. Maybe you're getting some metabolic benefits, but I've found with a lot of clients that we work with on Team BioLane, it just helps with adherence. The reason I'm a little bit skeptical of this is because there are some transient changes in metabolic rate when you are in maintenance or in a deficit. So if you go into a deficit, Within a few weeks, you'll see a drop in your metabolic rate, a small amount, but you'll see a significant drop. And then when you go back to maintenance, that drop within a couple weeks will attenuate. When they take the measurement is very important. And I've seen in some of these studies, they might have measured RMR a little bit too close to the end of a diet break where perhaps transiently metabolic rate is elevated. The other side of that is it certainly doesn't appear that there's a downside to doing diet breaks from the perspective of your metabolic rate. So if you want to implement them, it does appear that perhaps at least they can attenuate a small amount of the decline in metabolic rate. But I default to personal preference a lot more than anything else. So if somebody hates the idea of kind of like okay, this week I'm dieting, this week I'm not, this day I'm dieting, this day I'm not, and they just like to do the same thing every single day, I've met people like that, then I would just do that. I wouldn't try to force diet breaks. But if you're somebody like me, who I like the idea of like, okay, I am not traveling during this period. I'm in a regular routine. Okay, go. I'm going to be pretty aggressive with my diet. 
And then once work picks up, travel picks up, events pick up, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and just hit maintenance. That has worked really well for me personally. I lost 30 pounds in 2019 to 2020 doing it that way. And I know many of our clients have had a lot of success with that sort of methodology. So I think from a practical perspective, just fitting the dieting periods to your lifestyle is a really good idea. And perhaps it comes with a few extra benefits. If you guys are confused about how to implement this stuff, this is where good coaching can really come in. At Team BioLane, we're very well versed in implementing diet breaks and helping people with them. So if you're interested in getting coaching from Team BioLane, you can click the link in the description and I will catch you guys next week.